So because I'm on standby with the WRX and I can't get the WRX running and driving, I'm jumping back on the white STI. So what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. As you saw, we got our flywheel and clutch put onto our engine. We got the STI pushed back in. We have the throw up bearing, the clutch fork, all that stuff set up on this car. So that way we can get the engine in and start getting all the other accessories on. All right, transmission's jacked up. Power steering pump, I need you to kind of like float over here, buddy. Will you cooperate with us today? Don't matter. Power steering, there we go. There we go, now it's going together. Get it at the right angle, and you guys saw it just kind of slip it together. I like to get the bolts on the studs on the very, very bottom before dropping this thing down. Uh, it's a little bit easier while it's just up in the air like this. Plus, I just don't, I you know, it's like an extra security thing, man. There we go. Now it should be lined up. That is in its home. Something you always want to do though after you get an engine is make sure the uh, clutch fork will grab. We are grabbed. Sweet. It's pretty simple to get this thing in here. So now that the engine is dropped back into the 04 STI, I'm going to go through, start doing some of the like supplementary stuff, transmission mount, tighten that down, uh, get the starter in, get the last of the bell housing bolts in, get the engine actually bolted down. So let me run through here. It should take me like 10, 15 minutes to get all that stuff on there. Uh, and then we can go through here and start getting some actual accessories on here. I want to pull that crash beam off because we do have a nice front mount intercooler coming for this thing. Cause you guys know me. I don't like top mounts. I mean, I tolerate top mounts. I'll use the top mount if I absolutely have to, but if I have a choice, I always prefer front mount intercoolers. It's just who I am. I'm just not a huge fan of top mounts. So, oh, and we can get like the radiator in here. Oh, we can get a lot of stuff in here. The turbo, the up pipe. I have a new exhaust manifold coming. All sorts of good stuff. So sweet. Let me button up the last of the small stuff holding the engine into place. And then we can start doing some of the more fun stuff. Some more stuff bolted up and accessorized in here. Radiator is in. Coolant crossover tube is lightly bolted down right now because I still have to put the uh, breather tubes and everything like that on, but I'm kind of waiting on them. So I'm going to keep running through the engine bay here, just knocking out some more stuff. Cam sensor seals. I need to replace both of those, get the cam sensors in. I'll toss the AOS in, get the up pipe in, the turbo in. Uh, Let's we'll keep donking out a lot of this small stuff and we'll start jumping inside of the car. I do have some new wheels coming for this car. We are partnering with 1552 on this car, so I'm very excited. We're gonna have some dope wheels coming for this thing. We'll do like the whole kit and caboodle once those come in. Uh, new brake rotors, new pads, triple gauge pod, all three gauges from Defi. Whole bunch, whole bunch of stuff coming for this thing. I'm very excited for it. I wanna keep going, knocking out some more of this other stuff just to get the car prepped and ready. Like it should be e pretty easy to get this thing back on the road once all the parts show up. Probably take a day to be honest. So let's get the up pipe in there, the turbo, the AOS, all the fun stuff. I got all of the front accessory pulleys back on, power steering pump, AC or AC alternator, cam sensors are back in, radiators fully mocked up now. Uh, tension on the belts is good. I might replace this belt because it is starting to like fray right there. I don't know, I'm not gonna worry about it right this second. Uh, this line is gonna be disappearing. We have the IAG braided line on the way for that guy. Turbo's just set in there. The up pipe is in there and it's got both of the brackets on there. I was hardcore debating relocating the battery to the trunk, but I think I'm just gonna leave it up here just for the ease of everything. So. 
What I want to do next is start figuring out the hard wire for the fuel pump back here. We are making a run over to the shop later tonight so that way I can grab some new wire that's not CCA uh, just to be able to run this fuel pump power wire up to the front. I should have a couple extra old relays down. Well, they're not even old, they're brand new. I believe they're in here. Are there relays? Yup, we got relays for days. So I just stripped out the old fuel pump relay and whatnot, and we're gonna rerun a new one. Um, this one's just kind of old, it's kind of cheap, uh, and if I'm redoing everything, I'd rather redo it so I know how it's done and that it's done right. Not saying that it wasn't done right before. Peace of mind, it's cheap. I have all the wire at the shop. So we're gonna go jet over to the shop. We're gonna go kidnap some of my nice Tetzel wiring, be able to make a fuel pump harness for this thing. Uh, make it look all Gucci, make it look all nice. And then after the relay is done, we can go ahead and get the back seats permanently put back in this thing. And then I think it's just a waiting game. I would like to strip that intake manifold too, so we might soak that in some aircraft stripper tonight. Uh, and I think I'll just redo it in the wrinkle black color. Uh, just the red just stands out a little bit too much, in my opinion, in the engine bay. And all the charge piping, everything else is gonna be black. So in my eyes, it just makes more sense to do it black. So let's go jet over to the shop. Go kidnap some wiring. Back from the shop. Grab some 14 gauge and 18 gauge wire as well as a whole bunch of butt connectors so that way we can go ahead and make this fuel pump harness. So let's go ahead and hardwire the fuel pump. Boy, I figured it would be a smart idea to show the people this. So We've got our relay right here. I just riveted it to the car. I can unplug it if I need to. I don't know why I'm talking in an accent. Uh, we have the ground for the relay right here. That'll just ground it to the chassis on either that guy uh, or do the accent again. I don't even know what accent it is. I'm not doing the accent. So this will ground out to the chassis uh, either right there or right there. This will also ground to the chassis. This is the ground for the fuel pump, which will go on that guy right there. Uh, inside of here, so we've got the power the ground, and then this is the signal wire from the stock fuel pump that will trigger the relay so it just runs up. I have these little like male female connectors to be able to just unplug it. Everything is accessible too, which is why I did this. So now that this is done, uh, I'm gonna put these two grounds down, get this guy bolted back down, and then run the power wire uh, up to the front of the car where the battery's gonna be going. So let me clean up this mess and then our fuel pump, all we have left to do is the, uh, the power source. I got the fuel pump pretty much wired in except for the part that goes up to the battery. I've got the hatch pulled in right now because our new clutch is out for delivery. So this video is jumping around a little bit. I do apologize, but I want to get the hatch back running and driving again. So that way I'm not kidnapping Melanie's GTI whenever I need to go anywhere. So same thing as last time. We're going to pull the motor out of the hatch, swap the clutch, swap the new flywheel on, swap the new clutch fork on, put it all back in. Hope to God it works. So engine's out, took the clutch and the flywheel off, have the flywheel down there, the clutch right here. We've disassembled this flywheel and it was assembled properly. All the discs were facing the proper direction. So we're not quite sure what was going on. Uh, this is what I was talking about on the flywheel, how I like smoothed it and checked flatness on this thing. So that's kind of where it welded onto the crankshaft of blue was like right down there and I smoothed it all out and flatness was okay but I think this thing might be warped a little bit like that's the only thing I could think of is that the flywheel itself warped from all the heat that it saw I could be wrong I don't know the new one's out for delivery right now so I figured since I have all this crap out smart thing would do would just be replace it all so I legit don't see anything wrong with that clutch if we put a new one in and we still have this exact same problem then we know it's not a clutch problem. Like it cannot be a clutch problem, which means I won't have to take the engine out again, which is nice, but that means we have a different problem. So 
I don't know. Um, I'm gonna get this transmission side all reset with the uh, slide pin and everything like that. And once UPS drops off the new clutch, we'll get that put on the engine, get the engine put back in, get everything else hooked back up, start this thing and hope for the best. Six hours later, we got a new clutch. So we got the new ACT Mod Twin right here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get it disassembled. This is literally the exact same clutch, but brand new. A couple things that are different that I'm noticing are the bolts. Uh, they do appear to be a little different, but whatever, we'll get the flywheel bolted up to the engine, we'll get everything cleaned off nicely, get this thing assembled, get it aligned onto our engine, get the engine back into the engine bay, start reassembling the car, because we can only check if this assembly works while the car is running, which is the crap <laughs> part about this. Yeah. Like, normally when it comes to troubleshooting problems, you don't have to have the car working. Yeah. For this specific problem, the engine has to come out, or the transmission has to come out. Redo all of this, put it back in, and hope it works, so. For the sake of our own sanity, we're gonna cover some things here. Brand new flywheel, brand new twin disc. It is perfectly centered in there, okay? I know you're not gonna be able to see it that well, but right down there, on that friction plate, it says transmission side. The other clutch is also facing the transmission side. So this is all set up. The flywheel's torqued down to 55 foot-pounds. Red lock tighted. I still have to take this off. This pressure plate, 25 foot pounds, red lock tighted. Matt came up in here, got the brand new throw out bearing on, got everything nice and lubed up. We've got a different clutch fork now. We've got a brand new slave cylinder. We know, I, it's not the slave because that slave worked with the X clutch. So, at this point, if I don't trip and die, we should be able to just put this back in, bolt everything up, turn it on, and be fine. There's literally, if there, if it does not, then it is not a clutch issue. The brand new clutch, a brand new flywheel, a different clutch fork, a brand new throw out bearing, is literally all Gucci. Then we're gonna click the clutch fork. I heard it. Oh, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard it click. Oh, it's a lot harder to pull back on now. That's probably a good. That's <laughs> probably good. Uh, you want to put the clutch return spring on? Should be pliers over there, and the clutch return sheets should be up there. Oh no, right here. Uh, needle nose pliers right here. Or fuck the pliers. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing running. Hello everybody, we are back. Did you tighten it down already? Yeah, I'm that good, man. You're that good? I'm that good, I can do it. I don't know, where did the quarter inch tin go? Oh, it's right here. So, Matthias and I have gotten everything reassembled again. We have a brand new clutch, brand new flywheel. We did not force the engine and the transmission together. We didn't force the engine and the transmission together when we put this thing on. Uh, we just we got it so it aligned and just kind of slid together because that way we know everything's aligned properly Everything drivetrain wise at this point is fresh brand new If it doesn't go into gear, there's got to be some other issue brand new. It's a brand new slave cylinder It's a good clutch fork a different clutch fork pin brand new flywheel brand new pressure the whole kick caboodle man We replaced all of it literally all of it. So 
Uh, coolant's filled up in there. I see what we need. Uh, can you grab needle nose real quick? I almost got it with my finger. So, this time, I'm gonna hop in there. I'm gonna test it while Matt films and hopefully everything goes Gucci. Will it go Gucci? Fuck yeah, Will. Positivity. Yes. Good. All good? All right, engaging startup. Something's not happy. What was that? Uh, we haven't checked anything. I'm gonna check that real quick. Dear Diary, we fixed the clutch, we believe, because now the car will go into gear when it runs, but we can't verify that it moves in gear because now we have a throttle problem. Bro, it's like. No shit, we have been trading problem for problem for problem for problem. First we had a fuel leak, then we traded a fuel leak for a bad transmission, then we traded a bad transmission for a clutch issue. Now we traded a clutch issue for a throttle body issue. And we have a spare throttle body, or we used to somewhere, so now we're tearing apart the garage to try to find this old throttle body, which we may have accidentally thrown away, which sucks. That was supposed to go on my car. It was supposed to go on his car. I hate this car, dude. Ah! Bright side, we don't have to take the engine back out. Downside, I want to set it on fire and throw it away. I've got an EG33 throttle body in one of those boxes up there. I don't think that'll work though. Boy, I think I found the problem, mates. There's a ground wire that was missed, and that will definitely cause issues. So, um, it's probably the ground for the throttle body. So, let's ground that out, put this charge pipe back in, turn it back on, see if it fixes the codes. I've been scratching my brain about this car all night last night, trying to figure out what the hell's wrong with it. There has to be a break in a wire. So we're gonna do, we're about to run a continuity test on the harness that goes for the throttle body to the main engine connector. We'll run the continuity test, okay? We know that the throttle body itself is good because we've swapped out throttle bodies and tried two other throttle bodies with the exact same problem. It's a P2109, which is like a accelerator throttle pedal position code where it's just, it's not working as it's intended to be working. The continuity test comes back good. We know it's not the accelerator pedal also because we've tried swapping those out. If it's not those, I have a feeling this car has a brick DCU, not a brick DCU, but a failing or failed ECU. We're in a real stupid position with this car right now, so I'm gonna run a continuity test. If you don't know what that is, I'm gonna take my multimeter, uh, stick one end into one wire on the connector for the throttle body, the other end I'm gonna back probe to verify that we have a signal, a continuous signal going through there. And if we have a signal, it's going to beep, it'll just go beep. So let me run this continuity test real quick. Hope to God that everything checks out fine and we'll go from there. God, my check engine light's gone. I fixed it. I found it. Continuity testing. I hate electrical with a passion, but it's damn near the best skill I've ever learned. There's a break somewhere in this wire. Replaced it, and we now have continuity, and of course it was a throttle body connection wire, so I replaced it. I tested continuity. We have continuity. I checked the engine. We have no, or checked the engine. I checked um, ECM. No check engine light. I'm gonna let it do a relearn of everything, because I've reset this ECU like eight times. So I'm just gonna start it and let it idle and hope to God it doesn't do anything stupid. Uh, I'm burping the cooling system also, so once it gets up to operating temp, we'll try to see if it'll go back. And hopefully this fucking saga comes to an end.
can go backwards. I can go into any gear. I can go forwards. It works! God, dude, I'm so tired of this car. I got a couple small things I gotta clean up on it tonight, which I'll do later. I'm not gonna stress about it right this second. I gotta put the covers back on for the fuel tank, uh, button up a couple things in the engine bay aside from that, pushing this thing out. Uh, tune's Wednesday, so it should be solid. The clutch feels a little chattery right now, which it shouldn't. So we might try adjusting the clutch pedal one more time and bleeding the clutch one more time, um, just to make sure we have full actuation, everything's solid, get rid of the chatteriness in the clutch. Uh, Retorque down the lug nuts. This car's good to go at that point. So, fuck, dude, I am so over this car. Granted, all of the problems that we've endured, for the most part, have been my own fault, and I, I can 100% admit that. A, I shouldn't have cheaped out on fuel line. Vibrant from now on for fuel line only. I shouldn't have tried to reuse the clutch. I thought it would be, I genuinely thought the clutch would be okay to reuse. I don't know what about that clutch assembly is screwed, but something about that clutch assembly just, do, it will not allow you to go into gear. And we've tried, we tried two or three times with that old ACT mod twin that I have over here. And then we bought that new one, put that new one in and it worked right away. I don't know what about that one. Maybe it's warped. I think the flywheel's warped because all the discs were the right way, everything like that. I don't know. Regardless, we can go into gear now. As you guys saw, we can actually go backwards too. So we now have reverse. So we now have a fully functioning SDI six speed. It's fucking, now we just gotta go tune it. And then I'm just gonna drive it and I'm not gonna do literally anything to this car. Nothing. Literally nothing at all. Someone's calling me, hang. That was uh, our friend, Senor Josh. We're good for Wednesday. So, um, like I said, I'm gonna wrap up the last little small stuff on the WRX. It goes in every gear now. It goes forward, backwards. It idles, it revs. All the problems are fixed. Thank God, I'm not jinxing myself. Let me find wood. All the dogs are barking now. So with that, that's all I got for you guys on this one. I'm sorry that the WRX videos kind of overtook the STI. STI parts get delivered today, tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. So that way we can keep going on the white STI and get it back on the road. So with that, that's all I got for you guys. If you like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button, turn your black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, sign, whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be one of these corners, no idea which one quite yet. But with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out. Homies, there's somebody at the door. Give me a woo. woo. Give me a real one. <laughs>